ان الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين all praise and glory be to the allah the almighty he is our provider sustainer and malik al mulk he is the king of the kings of this universe salawat and salam peace and blessings to our last prophet muhammad mustafa sallallahu alaihi wa alihi ajma'in wa sallam sahaba ikram his companions tabi'in wa tabi'a tabi'in all of his followers and all the muslims brothers and sisters and boys and girls assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and also warm greetings from islam to all of our guests this evening who are joining us from uh, other communities as well brothers sisters and boys and girls in new zealand in the 2020 general election we will be asked to make a choice of two different referendums one is concerned whether the recreational use of cannabis should become legal the second referendum will ask the public to vote on the end of life choice giving people with a terminal illness the opinion of requesting assisted dying what do these referendums mean to us the cannabis referendum is to allow cannabis in a recreational way rather than for the medical benefits to define recreational consider the root word recreation which means brothers and sisters and boys and girls an activity done for enjoyment or in other words we can use cannabis for fun and pleasure let me explain to you all in detail about these issues under the stomach perspective this life is a test for all of us especially as the muslims as a result of how we do on the test will depend on what the reward in the hereafter inshallah god willing once you die our test ends we put down our pencils and turn in our test for gradings a plus a b plus b and so on after that once we are in the heaven in jannah there's no more need for a test no more any trials thus everything is permissible in heaven including alcohol the alcohol in heaven does not have the bad intoxicating effects it had in this world The Holy Quran says wa anharun min khamrin ladatin li sharibin and the rivers of wine is very delicious to the drinkers that alcohol consumed on earth causes people to become drunk when they drank it you know the consequences brother it is about the girls while the wine being drank in the heaven has no side effects or ill or at all so it's a different type of wine the most popular wine in the flavor is ginger beer ginger zanjabila may allah grant all of us the opportunity to enjoy the wine of jannah the heaven inshallah amen brothers and sisters boys and girls if you want to taste the wine of jannah the wines of the heaven we should avoid consuming any kinds of drinks or drugs that is intoxicating in this world all kinds of intoxicants are prohibited haram in islam why allah the almighty give us the answer for that allah says in the quran bismillah rahman rahim inna ma yurid ash-shaytan an yuqi'a baynakum al-'adawa wal-baghda fi al-khamri wal-maysir wa yasuddukum an dhikrillah wa 'anis-salah فهل انتم منتهون 
Shaitan, the devil, only wants to cause between you animosity and hatred through intoxicants and gambling. And to divert you for the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Almighty and the prayer and the salat. So the Quran is asking, so will you not abstain? So it's order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Almighty to keep away for all those kind of intoxications, drinks and any substances. Can anyone deny the wisdom of Allah the Almighty and his beloved Prophet Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, brothers, sisters, and boys and girls. Can we ignore the warning of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He says, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كل مسكن حرام Every intoxicant is forbidden. In Allah Azza wa Jal, أحد لمن يشرب المسكر أن يسقيه من ثيط الخبال. The also the, the, the messenger of Allah said that verily Allah the exalted, the majestic, the almighty made a covenant, an agreement or a promise to those who drank intoxicants in this world to make their drink from the Tina al-Khabal. قال يا رسول الله وما طينة الخبال فقال عرق أهل النار أو عصارة أهل النار. Then the prophet's companions ask, or oh, the messenger of Allah, what is the meaning of طينة الخبال? Then the holy prophet replied, it is the dirty discharge and sweat of the people of the hellfire. It means, brothers and sisters, boys and girls. If a person finds pleasure in taking alcohol and drugs in this world, Allah Almighty will make up that person to drink that dirty discharge from the hellfire. May Allah protect all of us from that kind of situation. I mean, I mean, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Therefore, in Islam, every evil thing which results in heavy losses is forbidden, is haram. Clearly, all kinds of intoxicants are regarded as forbidden because of their physical, mental, and spiritual adverse effects on individuals and communities. I would like to repeat again, as forbidden because of their physical, mental, and spiritual adverse effects on each and every individuals and communities. Someone who suffers drug addiction, for example, loses his or her common sense. It's very common. We can see them every day, what's happening in the community. As a result, is ready to do, that person is ready to do anything to obtain drugs without any consideration. They can steal, they can do burglaries, they can break their cars, they'll end up in fighting, they will do whatever at any cost because they need money to buy drugs. Islam names common sense preservation as the most important obligation for a Muslim. Now it's easy to understand why the Islamic law bans all sort of alcohol and any kind of drugs and substances, brothers and sisters and boys and girls. We also can see, because this will never ever bring any joy or happiness to us or our families at all. Nowadays we can see many broken families due to drug use and addictions. Divorce rate is high due to the family violence and abuses. No peace in the family at all. Our children are not safe from drugs. Our children and the university students find very hard to study and learn because it hurts the ability to focus and pay attention. There will be more car crashes and accidents if this act is legalized. Can we imagine the future for our children? 
our families and the fanu our mental and spiritual wellness and well-being furthermore drugs addiction is one of the most significant causes of self destruction of self destructing and self ruining behaviors what is self destruction i can quote a hadith a narration from the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam an abu hurairah radiyallahu anhu qaal man taradda min jabalin فقتل نفسه فهو في نار جهنم يتردى فيه خالدا مخلدا فيها ابدا هو بهرس او ثرو وايلنتلي هيم سيلف او هير سيلف اوف ا ماونتن اند كيلز هيم سيلف ويل بي ريبيتيدلي هيرلد انتو ذا فليمز اوف ذا هيل فاير وير هي او شي ويل ابايد ايترنلي ومن تحسى سما فقتل نفسه فسمه في يده تحساه في نار جهنم خالدا مخلدا فيها ابدا هو ابا درينكس بويزن اند كيلز هيم سيلف ويل بي ذا هيل فاير ايترنلي هيز بويزن ويل بي ان هيز هاند اند هي ويل درينك فروم ات ثيرد وان ومن قتل نفسه بحديده فحديدته في يده يجعل فيها في بطنه في نار جهنم خالدا مخلدا فيها هو ابا كيلز هيم سيلف وذ ان ايرن بليد ذا بليد ويل بي ان هيز هاندز اند هي ويل ستاب هيم سيلف ان ذا ستمك ان ذا هيل فاير ايترنلي ذس حديث ذس ديريشن از ريبورتد ات البخاري الشريف ديرفور ذا بودي ذات الله هاز جيفن تو اس از ان انديفيديوال is not a personal possession for us at all this body is not belongs to us allah is the owner of our body no one is free to dispose of their body as they wish because it's a trust it's an amana is a gift of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for which they will be held accountable by their creator Allah Almighty or the day of the judgment therefore brothers and sisters and boys and girls suicide and euthanasia are explicitly forbidden in Islam you can't kill yourself you can't harm yourself you can't hurt yourself there's no room there is no chance at all a patient who asks his doctor to end his life in one way or another is known as ethnosia and this is not allowed in islam why brothers and sisters and boys and girls life and death is in allah's hands we as his creations cannot manipulate the creator's mighty discretion we cannot challenge our lord of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala almighty we believe in our destiny Allah knows when to give life and when to take it back from us based on the mighty decree and the qudrat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala almighty everything is already written in the qala al qadr in the mighty decree that is one of the articles of iman we believe Allah also says in the Quran fa idha jaa ajaluhum la yastakhirun sa'atan wa la yastaqdimun when their time comes they cannot delay it for a single hour no can they bring it forward by a single hour exactly the right time the right way the right moment the right method the right place the right situation allah knows how to take our ruh our spirit from us may allah make our halat very easy May Allah give us a husn al khatima the best ending the excellent ending inshallah tabarak wa taala so that we will be buried in the qabr the graveyard our graveyard our grave will become one of the gardens of jannah no so inshallah tabarak wa taala or the day of the resurrection may Allah make our accountabilities easier so that we can enjoy the jannah the heaven with the presence of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
Therefore, brothers, sisters, boys, and girls, suicide and homicide are forbidden in Islam. We as Muslims believe the human life is sacred, is holy, and that the end of any human life is fixed in advance only by our Almighty Allah, the Creator of this universe, and He is the owner of this whole life. Death should end naturally, as ordained by Allah Subhanahu wa Almighty, and without any interferences or decisions from the person himself or herself, and without the assistance of a doctor or a health professional or anybody else. This is why all types of assisted suicide or euthanasia, voluntarily or non-voluntarily, direct or indirect, active or passive, are haram. This all are prohibited in Islam. No one should have the intention to kill himself or herself, even with the assistance of somebody else. Brothers, sisters, and boys and girls, as the Muslims, we believe in accepting by any hardship, suffering or illness, and to be patient and tolerant. And this will take away all the previous sins, insha'Allah, Allah's will. This is a way of purification, detoxication of our soul. In times of difficulties, Allah asks us to seek help from His through the prayer and patience. Allah says in the Quran, Innama sabirun ajruhum hisab. Those who patiently persevere, those who patiently persevere will truly will truly receive rewards abundantly without any measure. When you are patient, your rewards will be unaccountable. Hisab means accountability. Hisab without any measure, without any account. That much abundantly, Allah is giving you a reward as long as you are patient and persevere. Allah also promised in the Quran, لا يكلف الله نفس إلا بسعها. Allah does not burden a soul beyond that it can bear. This verse of the Holy Quran is comforting us because as a faithful believer, we have to believe in Allah and His wisdom. Trials and tribulations are part of life. As Muslims, we are never to fall into despair about Allah's mercy and wisdom. Allah says in the Quran, La rahmatillah. Don't become disheartened from the mercy and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Almighty. If assisted suicide is made legal, brothers and sisters, may Allah pray to all of us. There will be a lot of pressure on many vulnerable, old, lonely, disabled, and chronically sick people to ask for assisted suicide. Especially with the present difficult condition and the climate of COVID-19. And the financial difficulty, of course. Everyone, not only in New Zealand, in all parts of the globe, they are having a lot of financial burden, financial difficulty. So we should not support this kind of danger. The main thing is, brothers and sisters and boys and girls, we should kill the pain, not the patient. I just want to repeat again. We all should try to kill the pain, to minimize the pain, to get rid of the pain, not the patient. Brothers and sisters, may Allah Almighty protect us for this kind of shaitanic and evil whispers that could misguide us for the Islamic norms and values, Quranic instructions, and also the examples and adab akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I would like to emphasize over here, in not only Islamic concept, even from other interfaith brothers and sisters in other faiths, people, recently, uh, uh, a couple of years ago, we had a, a hui, we had a meeting in one of the universities. They also brought the same concept what I am sharing with you all. 
so please remember we all will be held accountable for our decisions in the hereafter therefore please choose think carefully make your own judgment think wisely before you vote in this referendum may allah guide all of us may allah guide us to make wise decisions for our future our society our prosperous country author of new zealand amin amin ya rabbal alamin wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh warm greetings again to you all respected brothers and sisters and ladies and gentlemen assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh